Hey everyone, I just wanted to show you how I use the height maps to actually make these higher poly meshes that actually have everything in the height maps. So basically it has in it has the information in the polygons themselves. As you can see, everything is in pretty high poly. And for that I use three programs. I use Blender, I use Marmoset, and then I use ZBrush. And well, theoretically you can probably do the same thing in Blender only by using the uh, displace displace uh, modifier and you can also use the subdivision modifier for it. Uh, I kind of prefer doing this method because it has yielded me better results and I know it uses three programs and it's a bit over complicating but uh, I, I really prefer better results over anything else. So basically I started out with just this basic uh, cylinder modeled out. Um, it depends on what you're actually making. I wanted to make something similar to, to this here, like this kind of rocky, uh, like a rocky structure thing. I will, uh, I will show you how I use it. Just give me a sec. Uh, so basically I used it for my tower thing and I will show you later in Unreal how everything looks uh, textured and actually properly made. Uh, I used it to sort of reveal some of these bumps over here. As you can see, some of them here. A lot of it is flat, but quite a lot of it is actually just kind of actually 3D, and it gives that nice displaced look that I was uh, that I was looking for all the time. So now, once you, you need to keep in mind also the UV. Sorry, uh, I have this uh, this little texture I created in Substance Designer. And you need to keep in mind that UVs need to be proper for this to work. Because if you displace the mesh and the UVs are still not... Uh, the UVs are kind of random. When you apply the actual texture back to the mesh, it will not look that good. It will look all displaced and weird and you definitely do not want that. So keep in mind the UVs are really important for this one. So if I go ahead and export this as an FBX... And let's just uh, create like a tutorial here. And let's uh, let's name this stones base. And just selected object. There we go. And we hop on to marble set. And I will just uh, these are the textures I'll be using. But uh, let's just find the the proper. Uh, sorry for this now. Yeah, here it is. So we import it into um, into Marmoset, and in Marmoset you can see it's pretty basic, and we just want to use this default texture, and there it's here by displacement and select the height one, and you will now click on here to select the actual textures you want to be using, and already have them here. Uh, for the thing I used, I used this one with kind of blacked out. Um, height map but because I'm doing this to kind of showcase to you how this is done it is better to use the full height map and let me just uh, find it yeah here it is and once you apply it yeah it's gonna look weird because you need to actually subdivide your model and I usually go for around a million polygons so like around five or yeah this is uh, this is pretty okay and now it's a bit hard to see uh, that's why I kind of like to bump the roughness a little. And uh, it's a bit hard to see inside Marmoset, but once you plug it, check it in, into ZBrush that we're going to use next, it's going to be way easier. So the parameter I found out works pretty good is probably something around 0.005. Let's see. Maybe that is even a bit too much. Uh, I mean, we can we can do something exaggerated just for the sake of the video, to to showcase how it actually works. Yeah, this is this this seems to be fine. And you go uh, after you're done with uh, your tessellation and whatnot. Actually, I can show you how it looks with a with a map on. Yeah, but once you once you see the actual uh, texture, it's kind of hard to see where the tessellation is taking place. So. I prefer not to do that usually, but what could help us is ambient occlusion here. 
So especially the cavity map. So if you have something to work work with like this, you can probably, yeah. Now this is um, this is starting to show some. Uh, this is starting to show where the actual displacement is taking place, and we can kind of see it better. Now the result doesn't look that good because we we, we didn't set up everything correctly. But all in all, it uh, it looks decent. I'm probably gonna bump it to 0 0.01 just for the sake of the video, so you can see how how it affects everything. So once we're done, we're just gonna go to File and Export and Model File, and we don't need anything from this one. And we will go back to our folder where we saved uh, the the base one, and this is gonna be let's say Stones High. Uh, Marmoset, Marmo I like to do like the MR because it came from Marmoset. And I'm just gonna export this FBX. And it's gonna export out. And now, one weird thing that might not be happening to you, but it did happen to me. If you chuck this model right into ZBrush, the, decim the decimation plugin will not work as best. It will not work at all, basically. And I don't know what's the case, but actually importing, into, importing it into Blender first, and uh, then um, exporting export, exporting the actual model from Blender actually helped me, well, to to actually work the the, the decimation plugin. So if you go ahead and import the the thing we just exported from Armoset, so let's just try and find it. Uh, it's always hard with these. So it should be here, yeah. Stones high MR. Okay. Import. We're gonna import it in. And now just wait a little because it is a high poly model, so it does take time for it to calculate everything. So uh yeah, there we go. It actually even placed it in the same place. So we're gonna hide this one for now. And we have yeah. We have the nicely tessellated model here. And if we select it, we want to... Uh, let's just delete all these unnecessary things connected to it. So just select it and we're gonna just export it. I like to export it as OBJ so it uh, you can differentiate the two. You don't have to do that, I just like it. And just stones, high, blender. And just make sure to always select selected only, so you don't export the whole scene. So export wavefront. Yep. And now we go into ZBrush. And in ZBrush, you click on import here on the tool button. And you find your uh, you find where you saved your file. I saved it here from Blender. Yeah. Open. And it should load here anytime now. There we go. Yeah, it seems fine. Uh, we're just gonna make a poly mesh. Everything seems to be working as intended. And we have a pretty nice visualization of it right now. As you can see, all pretty nicely tessellated. Maybe a bit too much, but it looks pretty good. And what I do now is I use the C plugin here. In Z plugin above here, and you go to the where is it now? Decimation master, yeah, sorry. And really important here is to keep the UVs because I, I told you in the beginning of the video that the UVs are really important for the textures to not get messed up. If you're doing this for something else, maybe it's not that important, but for something like stones or roof shingles or, or something like that, you really do need to press the keep UVs button and you you want to pre-process current now and that'll take some time because yeah it's a high poly mesh but it's not that high poly so it should take no time yeah it's yeah only nine seconds and we go back to Z plugin and you're not gonna click decimate current yet I like to place this let's say 1% or maybe let, let's do 4% for now and we can do decimate current. And now we have um, 
an actual decimated, uh, sorry, tessellated model with 10k polys that actually looks pretty good. And once you apply all the textures and smooth out the normals, this this actually ends up looking pretty pretty good. And for the final touch, you just basically export it out. And um, I will just call it Stones Low ZBrush. And just export it. And you have a model ready to go. You just apply the textures and everything works just fine. So if I will just now hop into Unreal so you can see everything properly and all the all the actual materials, how it all combines well. So here is the scene I have been working on lately and I use the height map thingy I showed you with this tower I made recently. So if we come closer, you will be able to see that these little stone tiles are actually popping out and they're actually 3D, they're not just some uh, normal map trick or something else and you can see it kind of on the curve here it's not completely straight it's uh, it has these little bumps because of the stones and <clears throat> more notably you can see it on top of these roof shingles that I actually started this whole experiment for I wanted to make nice roof shingles for this kind of uh, roof that has these pretty interesting shingles and as you can see it's completely 3d and now well up front it kind of looks weird because it has these really hard lines and whatnot but you're never almost never going to look at it from this up close so from far away it looks really nice and it looks really really good with those all those bumps that are coordinated by height map and i was really happy to finally be able to make these shingles by using just a actual height map and as you can see they're, they're present and visible from almost all areas and you can see it's not completely flat and it really gives out a good uh, good look to actually bump out and help you actually kind of emerge people into an actual world because it's actually really uh, like when it's flat it's pretty noticeable unless you're really far away and when it's bumpy even though you, you can't really quite tell completely that it is bumpy you know when it isn't so i was just going for the effect that it needs to be bumpy and it needs to have like real shingles instead of just a texture applied to a cylinder and it ended it ended up being pretty decent with the poly count it's i think the whole thing is around 20 to 30 thousand and since this is a hero asset i think it's it's pretty decent so far it's nowhere near finished but the roof and these stones part were really done with height maps. So I hope you enjoyed and I will record more in the future and see you later.